What's up guys? Welcome to the channel where you subscribe to get daily updates on Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at some charts, some very interesting charts at the end of the video. One that suggests that we could possibly not see a new all-time high till 2024. I know this isn't going to be very popular, but it is things that we have to look at. Also, we're going to take a look at a gap chart and see how long it can take for gaps to fill. And not that they have to fill, but we're going to take a look at them. Everybody needs to be aware of these things. So let's uh, get into it. Don't forget, there's a free Discord group. There's a link below. Definitely check it out. It's an awesome community, guys. Totally free. And let's get into it. All right, guys, as always, this is not financial advice, trading advice, or investment advice. Always do your own research before investing or trading in any market. All right, we usually go over the news to get a feel for the sentiment, but it is Sunday and there's not really any new news out. Um, I do believe we're probably going to see some volatility today, being it's the weekly close. And um, yeah, it should get pretty interesting today. We'll take a look at some areas to watch. And let's look at the fear and greed index first. We are at 75. We are back into the greed. We dropped out of the extreme greed. We were at 79 yesterday, so we dropped four points. And I just want to point out some stuff real quick. We're going to zip through all this stuff, guys. Um, lower highs in the macro in the monthly chart. Still nothing but lower highs. Um, a break of this 13,938 will turn me bullish until then i am not bullish um, one more thing we are getting higher highs in the monthly <clears throat> price action and lower highs in the rsi that is bearish divergence in the monthly um, not necessarily that it has to go down but uh, keep an eye on it um, the weekly we are looking at this yellow dotted trend line and the weekly a close above 11.2 and we could still be looking okay for a while but a break below this dotted yellow trend line and a close below it would be extremely bearish let's take a look at the bullish case guys if we look at this thick white trend lines here as a triangle the measured move of that is 27,000. and if we look at the yellow lines here which is a falling broadening wedge 17,000 is the target there um one more thing I want to point out in the weekly we've been watching. This is the possibility for one more leg up in the RSI to retest this resistance up top here. But I do believe we will get rejected there. If not, that might be a break of the 14. If we get a cl weekly close above this trend line, that would be bullish. But I don't believe that's going to happen, guys. I think we are going to see a retest of this bottom support line in the weekly RSI, which will be a big dip. <clears throat> Again, I could be wrong. I'm just, I'll show you both possibilities, but as of right now, I am still looking that direction. Um, okay, Prime XPT. If you guys are interested in trading, definitely check it out. Um, they have a lot of cool features on it, and I did get stopped out um, today on my close. It did hit, I think my stop was at 11,650. So I'm waiting for a re entry in my trade. I'm still going to be looking for a short. Uh, just so you guys know, just to keep it open to you. So anyways, Prime XPT, I'll leave a t tutorial up top. Definitely check it out. By far my favorite exchange. Um, you can trade Forex, gold, silver, oil, S&P, Dow, everything with using your Bitcoin. Um, also, I believe they are the most fair exchange. They don't trade against you like most other exchanges. And I am going to do an updated Prime XBT video on explaining how to do the margin trading and stuff. So you can use my promo code Savvy50. I also have a link to it below. You can use my promo code Savvy50 to get you 50% on top of whatever you deposit as a bonus. Savvy25 gets you 25% off of your fees. Um, they also have this feature, Covesting. Once you get on there, if you click this, this has a a bunch of traders on here that you can actually copy trade and put money in their fun and um you know you don't have to trade yourself just be very careful you can get in and out whenever you want um but yeah check it out if you haven't already i will be setting up a covest account i'll let you guys know when i do that um <clears throat> 
just some features on there. Like I said, you can trade all of this stuff on here. Like I said, um, crypto, Forex, whatever, whatnot. And they have a lot of cool features. You can set up your, your charts to have, you know, multiple charts on one screen. Um, other than, you know, if you don't have a bunch of screens or whatever. It's just, they have a lot of great setup. I will leave it at that and let's get into the charts. Okay, looking at the daily here, guys. <clears throat> if we zoom in, we are getting above the EMAs on the daily. That does look bullish, but of course, until a close here, um, not much you can really judge from. Um, I know a lot of people are super bullish and then you also have people that are bearish and they go at each other's heads, but guys, without bulls and bears, there's no market. So always keep that in mind. Um, so anyways, let's look at where we're at. So I've been looking at this as a rising broadening wedge. The 55 EMA, if we were to come back down and touch this on the daily within the next couple days, would be around the 10.9, 10.8 um, 10 to 10.9, depending on how quick we got there. And if we do break that, the measured move is around 38.48. That doesn't mean we're going down there 100%, guys. I just, like I said, there is a gap down here. We're going to take a look at that chart at the end of the video. Um, but if that does break, the next support would be around this trend line here, the pink trend line I've drawn off of these wicks, which is around 96 to 9,700, which is one of the gaps down there. Um, and I do believe that gap is most likely going to fill, guys. Um, just be careful. Like I said, nothing says they have to, but just be careful. I do believe that one's most likely going to fill. We'll take a look at some Fibonacci retracements also. But I have this white dotted trend line off all these wicks down here. Um, and that one would be if we came straight down within the next, within this week, this coming week would be around 79000 to 8000 Or I'm sorry, 7900 to $8,000 range. Um, let's look at the RSI. Daily RSI, we are coming back to retest the old support as new resistance. That does look like we're most likely going to come down from there, guys. Um, be aware of that. If we do close the daily back inside this, then we could get our one more push up that I was talking about in the weekly RSI also. So let's take another look at the daily in a different way here. Look at this old rising broadening wedge in the pink from um, last year. It started this year. It broke down in March. If we did come up to retest that, that'd be around the 13.3, 13.4, um, somewhere in that area, but still not breaking the all-time high. I believe if we do get above this pink trend line and get support on it and break the all-time, or the last year's high of, what was it, 13.9, right in that area. If we do break that, then I'll get bullish. Until then, I'm going to remain bearish looking for these lower targets. If we go from the swing low to the swing high, put the Fibonacci retracements on there. Our first line of supports around the 10,464, if this is the top. Um, if, if that breaks, then we're looking at the 9180 is the 0 0.382 fib. 8150 is the 0 0.5 fib. Um, the golden pocket zones between 6840 and 7120. And then looking at this as a rising wedge, the white dotted lines here. If we took a measured move, if we did come down to close that gap and we broke below this $96, $9,700 range. We could be looking for $6,500, which would break the uh, golden pocket zone. If this remained bullish, if this was a bullish move, then I would expect it to come up from here. But that does not hold. 56.81 is the 0.786 fib. And then we, of course, have the gap down here that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Don't forget to check out my wife's webpage, Inkermage.com. There's a link below. Um, check it out. If you have any questions, hit her up in the contact. It's quality stuff, guys, so uh, check it out. Anyways, four hour. Uh, let's dig in here a little bit, and then we'll go into the one hour, and then we'll look at the charts I'm talking about. So just looking at this in the big picture, guys, the four hour. Like I said, watch this pink trend line up here. Um, I don't see us breaking that. If we do, then it gets extremely bullish, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, looking at, let's zoom in a little bit. And looking at this as a rising wedge in here, you can see the resistance being the white trend line on top and then the dotted orange trend line on the bottom. If we were to come up back up there today to retest that, 
would be around the 11,730 if we get a break above this and then get support. I'd be looking for that 12.8 to 13.1 area. Um, but 11,730, 11,750 areas where we want to watch here. Um, I don't think we're going to get back above that, but it doesn't matter what I think. Um, Bitcoin will do what it wants. The EMAs in the four hour are starting to look bullish. We have support on the 55 EMA, which is about 11,550. Um, our eight has crossed over our 55 right here next would be the 13 if that crosses that could get us up to this range so keep an eye on that um the bearish case here which i believe is looking at this as a rising wedge here in white and this bottom trend line being around 10,900. if we took a measured move of that measuring the widest part of the wedge two if we broke down over in this range would also get us down to what we talked about earlier around that 5,800. Um, keep that in mind. And one more thing. <clears throat> if we do get a major bounce, if we come back down and test this 10.5 without coming down to close these gaps, um, a lot of people have been talking about this being a um, inverse head and shoulders, this being a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, breakout. Um, if we do get a big bounce there, that could confirm it. Um, until then... I I just don't think that's what it is. Let's uh let's look at the one hour. So this is the more immediate. Let's look at the four hour um RSI first, guys. So looking at the RSI, we're getting higher highs in the RSI on the four hour. And let's zoom in and match that up with the price action, see what that's telling us. And that's given us bearish diver hidden bearish divergence. If you look, we're getting lower highs in the price action, higher highs in the RSI. That's hidden bearish divergence. Um, zoom in a little bit. We could come up, retest the top of this before continuing down. If we do close a four hour, if you're if you see this falling channel here, if we do close a four hour above this, get support on it, then obviously that would be our next leg up that we we're talking about. So look at the one hour. So in the one hour, if you look at the top. Resistance line and the dotted line as the support on the bottom. If we were to come down and test that today, that would be around that 11.2, which match, matches up with that long-term trend line from the monthly, weekly, daily so far. Um, let's look if we broke down the bearish case scenario on that would be right around that 96.38 range, which would close that gap. So keep an eye on that, guys. The bullish case here is... Looking at, well, one more thing on the bearish case. We could look at this as a rising wedge also using the um, solid white line. And we already broke down from there. And the target would be around 99.50 for that. But again, this is most likely invalidated if we cross that 17.38 or whatever. Now let's take a look at the bullish case scenario. If you can see the yellow trend lines here, falling broadening wedge. If we were to break up and up above that seven or eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty, the measured move is about twelve thousand seven hundred fifty to twelve thousand eight hundred, which would also retest the top of this trend line. So be aware of that, guys. That's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, we get one more touch up here before coming over and breaking down. Let's look at the one hour RSI. Um, we had this rising wedge over here. We broke down out of. Seems we're in a rising wedge again. Um, if we do come down and break this bottom line, close the hourly below it. That's bearish coming down. Um, I'm still, I'm still bearish here, guys. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of people say that, think that's crazy, but I really think we have to have a pretty big correction or a capitulation coming. Um, that's just my opinion. But let's look at this chart now. The gaps. And we'll talk about them real quick, and then we'll move into the chart. Oh, we're going to pick our winner also of the Kobo Vault Generation 2 Hard Wallet. And if you leave your comment, hit the like button. That'll get you entered to win next week. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel also. Um, whoever does win, you can pick the Kobo Vault. You know, get a hold of me. Let me make sure it's you. And you can either take the Kobo Vault Generation 2 Hard Wallet, or you can get the um, $50 in Bitcoin. You just let me know. But anyways, first, let's take a look 
Here's the 3570 gap. I have lines at the three gaps that we have unfilled, and I have them marked unfilled. There is one down here at 3570. It's another one at 7625 and one at 9665. We had one back here at 11.8, and we made that gap August 9th, 2019. It took almost exactly a year to close that um, August 5th, 5th of this year. Then we had this gap over here May 9th, 2019 at 69.90. That was March 12th when we closed that, which almost another year. That was about 10 months it took us to come close this gap. Um, and again, guys, I'm not saying they have to fill, but the charts tell us that they have filled in the past. Keep an eye on it. Um, I do think no matter what, we're most likely at least going to close this 97. The 76 gap will probably be filled too, in my opinion. Like I said, unless we get a major bounce off the 10.5 and continue up from there, break the 14,000, then it becomes bullish. But until then... Um, I'm looking for these gaps to fill. Let's look at, this is the long-term chart I was talking about. A lot of people, you know, and this doesn't mean it's going to happen, guys. This is just things you need to look out for. And I'm going to show you real quick. We had an all-time high in June of 2011 back here. And it took us 623 days to break that high. Then we had the all-time high over here in November of 13. That took us 1,232 days to break the all-time high. As you can see, that is about, um, it's right about 95%. So if we did that over here from 2017's all-time high, and we did the same thing, as you can see, each cycle here from all-time high to, to breaking it, gets longer and that would put this at about 2024 before we break the the twenty thousand dollar range again not saying it has to happen but definitely take a look at it it's definitely a possibility um let me throw some arrows in here real quick and then we'll move on to pick the winner um right here that's a pretty small arrow but hope you guys can see it this is the low over here and I believe that we're looking at the same thing here um, from this all-time high. And as you can see, it did dip down lower. We could definitely see that, guys, so be careful. Um, yeah, there's definitely still a possibility of going much lower here, guys. But obviously, there's also a possibility that the bull run has started. I just I don't buy it. And let's... Let's start off picking a random number and we will get our winner generated number six. We go to the number six video. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you have a plan? Let's copy the link address, put it over into the comment picker. And don't forget, make sure you smash the likes and leave a comment down below. That will get you entered to win next week's um, giveaway. And don't forget, if you don't want the Cobalt Vault Generation 2, you can get $50 in Bitcoin. So let's uh, pick a random comment and see who wins. Hopeful one, you have won. Get a hold of me um, and I will make sure it's you. You decide which one you want, the Cobalt Vault or the $50 giveaway in Bitcoin. And we'll go from there. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to click Crypto Savvy logo above my head. Smash that like button. Leave your comments. And I'm out.